Hi YouTube, welcome to Calf Chats and today we're talking about electronic music and its place in the indie world. Okay, so let me open by introducing this idea. Indie is a melting pot of music. There is no true definition as to what indie is. In fact, it sort of applies more to the artist than the art itself. What I mean is there's no one size fits all when it comes to grouping indie artists together. For every Oasis, there's an XX. For every Kasabian, there's an MGMT. For every Royal Blood, there's a Daft Punk. So what I wanted to get talking to you about, in the same way that we do the lineup breakdowns and the top fives and other calf chats, I'm introducing a new one today called Melting Pot. Every time we do an installment of Melting Pot, are we gonna talk about a different kind of music and how it integrates itself into the indie world, where it stands at the moment and where I think it might be going in the future. Sound good? So the first kind of music I wanted to talk about was electronic. How electronic music found a nice comfortable place within the indie landscape and how I see it moving forward. In 2015, British indie music is no longer about white boys with guitars. It's not just four dudes, a drummer, a bassist, a lead guitarist and a singer with the singer occasionally doing rhythm guitar. It's not about that anymore. From festival lineups to enemy covers to indie discos, you're gonna see slash here more stuff like Delphic, Churches, MGMT, Everything Everything, Metronomy, Hot Chip, Friendly Fires. And I personally attribute it to the development of music technology over the past few decades. It's certainly no longer acceptable to describe indie as a subgenre of rock. No way. Okay, when trying to source the integration of electronic music into indie, I think it'd be very silly not to begin with Blue Monday. After the death of Ian Curtis, the remaining members of late 70s post-punk outfit Joy Division decided to follow a more contemporary, more electronic sound with their follow-up band New Order, with a song no more encapsulating that sound than Blue Monday. Citing influences from techno, disco and house, the likes of Giorgio Moroder and Kraftwerk, as well as the entire DJ scene going on in New York and Detroit, the track doesn't even follow a standard verse chorus structure that you'd expect from Joy Division, or even New Order's first album, Movement, instead opting to focus on a four to the floor driving beat rather than that verse chorus verse chorus song structure. Bernard Sumner, frontman of New Order, even said to NME, I remember just being turned on by the latest technology that was becoming available. It was pre-computers, pre-MIDI, and I built the sequencer from an electronics kit. We programmed everything in step time using binary code digital readouts. He goes on to say, I don't really see it as a song. I see it more as a machine designed to make people dance. It comes on in a club and it sounds so powerful. I think Love Will Tear Us Apart connects with the people because of the emotional content within the song. And I think Blue Monday connects with people because of the startling lack of emotional content within the song. Speaking of lack of emotional content within indie electronic music, I wanted to get back to this later because I wanted to discuss does that make this kind of music superficial? So Blue Monday broke a f ton of ground for rock music. The punks who were spinning unknown pleasures on the turntables were now at the club. They were at the Hacienda, where it wouldn't be uncommon to hear the DJs playing New Order as well as Depeche Mode, orchestral maneuvers in the dark, Soft Cell, Human League, Pet Shop Boys, Duran Duran. All of these names synonymous with crafting that electronic sound that immediately springs to mind when you think of the 80s. Sticking it to the 90s now and I want to talk to you about two students, New Order fans and Hacienda regulars, Ed Simons and Tom Rollins. These two formed the DJ duo, The Dust Brothers, taking on a residency in 1994 at the Heavenly Sunday Social Club in London, oft frequented by big names in the indie field such as Noel Gallagher, Paul Weller, James Dean Bradfield. After a 1995 international support slot with the likes of Orbital and Underworld, they went on to change their name from Dust Brothers to Chemical Brothers. Chemical Brothers being responsible for big 90s electronica acid house tunes like Blot Rock and Beats. The Chemical Brothers were pioneers in a genre called Big Beat. Not only did they cite the Smiths and New Order as their earliest musical influences, but they went on to feature big indie names in their tunes. In Let Forever Be, you can hear Noel Gallagher on the vocals, and in their 2005 track, Believe, you can hear Kelly Okariki from Blood Party. Speaking of Noel, this isn't a rare occasion where an indie artist embraces his electronic side. You have Ian Brown from the Stone Roses working with Uncle on a few tracks. Not only that, his solo albums always had a bit of a twang of electronic. No more so than in the song F-E-A-R. Indie rock outfit Primal Scream's third album, Screaming Delica, is another perfect example of what I'm on about. Completely reinvented their sound in order for a more dancier vibe than their previous rock sound. It may have been the acid. It was definitely the acid. That is an incredible album. And the Happy Mondays just goes without saying, pills, thrills, and belly aches. So now we're getting into the new millennium and there's just as much dance music integrated into indie as there is punk and rock. LCD Sound System, Blot Party, Calvin Harris, MGMT, 
justice all cropping up on the scene with a less experimental and more structured approach to lyricism and general songwriting than their predecessors. Bearing in mind they're allowed to draw influence from elsewhere. So now you start to see music that's not only popping up to make you dance but it's also to make you think. And I'm not saying that was the case before, I'm just saying it's a more mass produced commercial thing now. And that doesn't mean it's inaccessible to clubbers. Acts like too many DJs have proven that you can still mix LCD sound system into block party, into Arctic Monkeys and still come up with a dirty house set. So that brings us to where we are now and indie music and electronic music blend together harmoniously. As I mentioned before, is indie electro superficial? Does a great beat you can dance to mean that it sacrifices great lyricism? Eh, I don't think so. In my opinion, what's happened with the rise of music technology over the past few decades all the way from Blue Monday's drum machine to Church's launch pads, is that it simply broadened the landscape for these creatives to move about in. Yes, there is a lot of music where the focus is more on making you dance than having some kind of cathartic epiphany, but there's nothing wrong with that. In my opinion, music is designed to make you feel whether that be in your head or in your body. As for the future of Indie Electro, it's a very interesting time. I know the internet's been around for years, but never before has it been this easy to communicate and collaborate with other people around the world. Take hip hop, for instance. Producers making beats in LA will be getting guest verses off of rappers who are like touring in France. Could it be possible that we're gonna see a wide open platform for collaboration in this field? Where creatives can get together and share their ideas and collaborate, citing influences from all over the world. Music may begin to transcend its geographical influence and rather focus on the artists that have preceded them. Say for instance, one artist from Brazil gets in contact with an artist from Leeds and they start collaborating and sharing stems through this open artist networking platform. Who knows? In case you're wondering where we stand in terms of the Knife and Fort Factory and whether or not we're gonna feature dance music, EDM, electronic music, hell yes! The sky is the limit for what and who we feature on this channel. So long as you're unsigned and you're independent, of course we're willing to work with you. Just so long as you sound good and you're serious about making it in the industry, hell yes we'll get you on board. Doesn't matter if you're a white boy with a guitar or a guy from Ethiopia with a launch pad. If you sound good, we'll feature you. I hope you enjoyed the first edition of Melting Pot where we talk about the blending of genres. Let me know which genre you'd like me to cover next and we can see how one genre has worked its way into indie and how they work harmoniously together. I'm thinking punk next. I, wanna, I, I, I might do punk. I think we can talk a lot about punk. As usual, be sure to hit that sweet subscribe button, that way we can get the content out to you as soon as it drops. I checked it the other day, by the way, it does definitely ping up when we upload a new video, so if you do subscribe to us, you will get that on your phone. It's, that's a really neat feature. So subscribe and make sure you keep in touch with all of those. Remember, like this video, comment down below, it helps us grow. And yeah, I'll see you really soon.